All right, Scott Jennings, interview in three, two. My grandfather, uh, Morton Jennings, who uh, passed away in 1998, was magistrate on the fiscal court in Hopkins County, a committed Democrat. My whole family, committed Democrats. My dad was a union uh, organizer uh, at his plant in Dawson Springs, and so my upbringing in politics was driving around in my grandfather's station wagon, putting up Morton Jennings for magistrate signs, going to fiscal court meetings. So I really grew up in a county courthouse. So I have a real reverence for people who run for a county and local office. Uh, there's not a lot of fanfare that goes with those campaigns or those offices, but they're important. And county and local government is closest to the people, and I learned that when I was a kid. My wife and I got married in 2004. Uh, in fact, we got married on a Saturday in Knott'sville, Kentucky, which uh, is in Davis County. It's a suburb of a suburb of Owensboro and a very old Catholic church there. And I was back at work uh, at the Bush campaign in Albuquerque on Monday. We went on a honeymoon in December of 06. Uh, we really both wanted to come home. My family lives here. Her family lives in Western Kentucky. We both are U of L graduates, and we both love Louisville. Uh, and we wanted to raise our family here, and so we made the decision. We came home, and I'm darn glad to live in Kentucky. When did you first think that you wanted to do something more uh, nationally? And, and tell us about your experience uh, at the White House. So while I was in college, I was covering politics in Louisville, and in the 2000 campaign season. Senator McConnell called me and he asked me a you know, question, I'll never forget it. He said, when are you going to get off the sidelines and get into the game? And he was asking me to go to work for then Texas Governor George W. Bush. Uh, so I had to complete my studies at UofL, which was a trip to China. I studied in China for a couple of months, came home and went right to work on the Bush campaign, which then became the Bush-Cheney campaign. I did not go to the administration uh, in the first term. I stayed around Kentucky to serve on Senator McConnell's campaign in 2002 and then Governor Fletcher's first campaign in 2003. But when that was over, uh, the White House asked me to go to New Mexico, where I lived in Albuquerque for a year in 2004. And then after that, you know, the rest is history. I got a chance to go work in the White House and uh, serve under Karl Rove in the White House Office of Political Affairs. My time in the White House was uh, really an amazing experience. I flew with the president on Air Force One. I briefed the president in the Oval Office. I served with some tremendously dedicated people good people that were all there for the right reasons. I was part of two Supreme Court confirmations uh, as part of the personnel process in the White House, and so I really saw quite a, a breadth of, of stuff that was going on in the second term, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Tell me about uh, RunSwitch, uh, the company that you began, what you do and how important that is to you. This business has changed a lot. In the past, you would just have a lobbyist and go about your business, but now, because uh, of the changing nature of the media environment, you need to have your government affairs bases covered, but you also need to have your communications bases covered. You need to know what's my message for what audience. Let's, let's, let's move this one this morning, and then I know we've got a fancy farm meeting and we've got a uh, writing meeting, so let's we'll move this out today. Everyone's watching all the time, and communications, I think, has become just as important uh, to what the lobbyists say to legislators and policymakers. Run Switch would not be possible without my partners, Steve Bryant and Gary Gerdeman. It would really not be possible without our team. The best thing about running your own company is when you get the right team around you. It is a joy to go to work every day. Running a company here in my 30s uh, after working in the White House in my 20s has been kind of the next frontier, and so I'll turn 40 uh, next year, and we'll see, uh, we'll see what I do in my 40s. But uh, running a company has been has been a, a great labor of love and, uh, and we're fortunate. We're the biggest public relations firm in the state now. I've had mentors my whole career, whether it was you know Mitch McConnell early on asking me to, to get into politics to, I'll go way back to Brian Rublin. I don't know if you know Brian was news director at 84 WHAS Radio when I worked there and probably worked with me on my writing more than anybody ever had and I've never forgotten it and so over time I've had these mentors that have helped me along the way. MCs uh, at Fancy Farm have come and gone. Um, traditionally it's been journalists um, and uh, last year was a departure. Um, Matt Jones, a sports host uh, on the radio. Uh, you sort of I guess were brought in to, to balance that. How do you read into to, to the reason you were chosen? I've written a lot of fancy farm material for a lot of different people, and I've gone most every year that I've been involved in politics. I've been there a lot. I've participated in it a lot. I believe in the tradition. I'm a Western Kentucky guy. Now let's fast forward from the time that uh, we're taping this to uh, the time that it will air on KET, and in just a few minutes, 
you'll take the stage and be before, uh, what, a couple thousand, 2,500 screaming uh, people who've been fired up and everything. Uh, what's going to be running through your mind? Uh, I really think having a, a prepared text when you walk up there is important. I've always told candidates, go up there with something prepared because as soon as you get behind that podium, your brain's going to freeze. It's an, it's an experience unlike any other, so I'm going to take my own advice and to take some prepared material up there and uh, hopefully uh, the crowd will respond. And, and really it's all geared towards making the event as entertaining and important uh, for the people that are there as possible because you know we've been doing this since 1880. We want to we keep it going. Three, two, one. Thank you, Mark, and welcome everyone to the 136th annual Fancy Farm Picnic.